Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today we're going to do a teardown of a camera flash. This guy right here. Uh, back in high school, I was really into photography, and I took a bunch of uh, photography classes. Uh, in the classes, we used cameras that were uh, fully manual. They had film in them, and part of the class was to learn how to uh, take pictures that were good for film, uh, how to develop that film, how to actually make prints out of that film, and uh, in the class we also learn how to use a flash. Little rant. If you consider yourself even a halfway decent photographer, you should know how to use a flash. The reason for this is that it's not always nice and sunny outside sometimes it's cloudy outside and oftentimes you have to uh, take pictures indoors so not only owning a good flash but also knowing how to use a good flash uh, uh, is uh, required for calling yourself at least a, a decent photographer all right and end rant if you don't know anything about camera flashes here's just a little synopsis uh, on the bottom here, the flash has a shoe attachment, and this clips onto your camera. There are essentially two kinds of shoes. There's a hot shoe and a cold shoe. If you're using a camera with a cold shoe, the, the shoe, all it does is hold the flash on top of the camera. And then to uh, synchronize the trigger between the shutter of the camera and the flash, there's a little... I think this is a 3.5 millimeter jack and the cable plugs into the camera. If you have a hot shoe, uh, there's little contacts on the bottom and the side of the camera and those contacts serve as the trigger for the flash. Now when using the flash, there's a little table on the back of this and I'll show you a, a close-up of this when we tear this thing down. And this little table shows you how to uh, adjust the camera for when you're actually using the flash because the flash manufacturer has uh, done those uh, tests and calculations but oftentimes you don't use a flash like this where the bulb was pointing straight out this flash actually can adjust the uh, angle of the uh, light emitting side uh, to, to, to several different angles and this allows you to for example bounce the flash off the ceiling to uh, give you a more natural look versus the really harsh look and deep shadows of the uh, pointing the uh, uh, light emitting element directly at you. Before we tear the flash down I wanted to talk a little bit about what we might see inside the flash and also uh, make an admission of the reason why we're tearing this guy down is that uh, sort of like for a repair uh, what happened was is I left the batteries the, it takes four uh, AA batteries inside it too long and the batteries leaked so I want to tear this apart to clean the contacts inside so they're not all corroded and gross at the heart of any flash is the uh, flash bulb the bulb consists of a glass tube uh, filled with xenon gas inside. On either end of the tube there are electrodes with wires coming off. Like that. The tube has no filament inside or anything and the part that makes the uh, flash bulb work is the trigger uh, element and there the trigger element consists of a metal well let's call it plate for lack of a better word that sits on the side of the flash tube but uh, outside the glass which is also hooked up with the wire the way this element works is first you apply a high voltage to these two uh, lines here the uh, Xeon gas inside the tube does not normally conduct electricity. If I remember correctly, Xeon falls into one of the noble gas groups and 
uh, noble gases don't conduct electricity because they don't have any free electrons. So you have this high voltage sitting here across the contacts. What you do, or what the camera flash does then is uh, very rapidly apply a high voltage to this uh, trigger plate. The trigger plate essentially yanks all of a sudden on the electrons that are sitting inside the, the Xeon gas and that yank of electrons uh, causes the gas to ionize, meaning uh, it yanks the electrons off of the uh, Xeon uh, gas atoms and the ga there's free electrons available now. As soon as that happens, that high voltage will discharge through uh, the Xeon gas because the gas goes from not conductive to conductive. When that arc of electricity goes through the gas, the gas becomes supercharged and emits photons. You get this really bright flash. To get high voltage, a really tricky transformer circuit is used. Uh, if you don't know anything about transformers, a transformer can take uh, a little bit of voltage and make it into a lot of voltage, or vice versa, take a lot of voltage, make it into a little bit of voltage. But the thing to remember about a transformer is power is always conserved, meaning that uh, power at either side of the transformer remains the same. So I will probably eventually do a video explaining how transformers work, but today that's just the little synopsis of it. In the case of the camera flash, the transformer is taking a little bit of voltage, which uh, if you've ever looked at like a disposable camera, it only takes a single AA battery, so 1.5 volts. Or in the case of the flash that we have here, this takes four uh, AA batteries, so it's six volts, which is a little bit of voltage, and uh, it converts it to a lot of voltage. The way it does this is it creates a, a, a resonator or an oscillator. When the uh, everything turns on, uh, this uh, coil here, which has a lot of turns, uh, that's how the uh, high voltage is made, is turned on from the your battery source. And uh, right here, uh, the diode blocks it from going into the capacitor. Also, current starts flowing down uh, these two sets of windings here. Uh, this winding uh, is fairly large, but it's nowhere near as many turns as uh, the, this would be the primary winding and this would be the secondary winding. So the primary winding uh, connects to uh, this uh, NPN transistor. Also at the same time, this little, uh, let's call it a trigger winding for lack of a better word, uh, flows to the base of this transistor and turns the transistor on. When the transistor turns on, current starts to flow in the primary winding and through transformer action, uh, the magnetic field of the primary winding couples to the magnetic field of the secondary winding, which causes a negative current to flow out of the uh, capacitor here because the capacitor here is actually storing negative voltage. Here's where the trickery comes in. The secondary winding also couples in with the uh, trigger winding. And uh, they do this in such a fashion that current flow in the secondary winding creates a negative current flow in the trigger winding. So the current that would be flowing down this way to the base now gets essentially choked off by the uh, coupling to the uh, secondary windings. What that does is the uh, stops the current flow to the NPN transistor. The NPN transistor then turns off, which stops the current flow to the uh, uh, primary windings. And the magnetic field in the secondary winding collapses, which yanks a bunch of uh, the current out of the capacitor. And this process repeats again where the transistor is turning on and off which is causing these uh, uh, primary windings to essentially oscillate, turn on and off, on and off, which uh, that uh, couples in with the uh, secondary windings to create your negative voltage here at the capacitor 
which uh, in turn uh, uh, creates a, a voltage across these trigger windings which to bring it all the way back around turn this transistor on and off so uh, this is a uh, trickery because uh, without using any uh, active elements like a switch mode power supply or something like that you're able to take fairly low voltage in the case of this flash six volts up to uh, sometimes I believe into the several thousand volts what I've drawn here is I've actually omitted the uh, transformer section and what you're seeing is the diode and the uh, main capacitor when the uh, flash is considered fully charged there is a neon bulb inside the flash which illuminates to show you that the voltage at this point here has gotten sufficiently large enough to uh, cross the neon tube which have a reasonably predictable uh, breakdown voltage and it illuminates when you are ready to uh, fire the flash you have a a trigger switch. When you close that trigger switch, uh, you use another set of transformers and said in a little bit of trickery. Uh, by tapping off some voltage so out of the uh, main capacitor, when you close the switch, a reasonably high current instantaneously develops in the primary windings of this transformer. Uh, that uh, uh, magnetic field couples into the secondary windings of the transformer which the secondary windings have a lot more turns and that's what gives you uh, that uh, voltage step up action and that is connected to that trigger plate of the uh, flash tube when that flash tube uh, yanks uh, ionizes the gas inside the flash tube uh, the flash tube becomes conductive and it will take the voltage stored on this side of the capacitor and conduct it all uh, through the gas creating the flash effect. Once uh, there's uh, so little charge left in the capacitor that you, uh, the flash bulb can no longer conduct, uh, the, uh, how'd you put it? The, the current ceases, the flash turns off, and the charge circuit over here begins to uh, fill the capacitor back up. Now that we know what to look for inside a flash, and I wanted to point out uh, that uh, this is just one way of doing it. There's a bunch of different ways this can be done. And also this flash has some automatic modes and uh, we can take a look at uh, those when we tear the flash apart. But now let's go ahead and end, uh, grab the screwdriver and see what's inside. For the uninitiated, this is what a camera flash looks like up close. As I mentioned earlier, this camera, this flash, which is made by uh, Vivitar, Electronic Flash 2000, has some automatic features, which would be interesting to see uh, what they actually do inside. But if the switch sits in manual mode in the middle, this table on the back here is what uh, you would use to uh, configure the flash. Let's take a closer look at that, like that. So looking at this table, you have your ISO and DIN settings, which is the sensitivity of your film. And then you have the distance away from your object that you're sitting in either feet or meters. And then these numbers here are the uh, f-stops that are best to use for that situation. Then uh, looking back here, you have the ready lamp, which this is the lamp that illuminates when the flash is fully charged on off. Not sure what this auto check does and I've misplaced let's go with misplaced the manual for this long ago because i only ever ran it in manual mode i never used the auto mode down here you have the test button what the test button does is it sets the flash off so you can make sure that the flash is functional that the batteries are full etc and now we finally get down to this shoe 
if you've watched my previous videos, I have this adapter which takes a mini shoe to, uh, this is a, a full size standard shoe. And how this works is the, uh, the flash slips into the shoe and then you tighten this little wheel down to uh, secure it in place. Because this is a cold shoe, as you can see, the metal sides are all one piece and there's no little button in the middle. But if you closely look at the shoe here, you have the little metal button here, which is one contact. And then you have this piece right here, which is another contact. So in a hot shoe, the uh, uh, flash makes uh, one connection through the, the side of the shoe and the second connection through the this little ball. If you don't have a hot shoe, there is a 3.5 millimeter jack right here, which you plug a cord into, and then that cord comes over and plugs into the uh, camera. To pull this thing apart, first I took out the two screws down here. And then they kind of just gingerly pried on this top section, but I couldn't get the top, this top section to release. It was still kind of locked into place right here. So I started prying at these little circles on the side. You can see it looks like this on the end. And eventually I got one to pop out. Turns out it holds them with clips. And inside this uh, circle is the mechanism that gives you that nice little click action to lock the uh, the flash into these degree settings as you move it around. It's actually fairly simple. You have a spring here, right here, and let me get my pointer, and the spring here uh, pushes on this little, uh, call it like an indent, and this indent is what then makes that nice clicky sound. Now we've got the uh, this top section off here, which was a little bit of a pain in the butt. We can see the three wires that we talked about that go to the flash here. We have the red wire, which comes over to here. We have the black wire. It's kind of hard to see on this button, which comes over to here. And then this white wire serves as the trigger and is wrapped around the bulb right there. Taking the four screws off the bottom here, we find that uh, Vivitar actually did a really nice touch with the um, attachment of the uh, shoe here. And that's it's kind of hard to show you on camera. There's actually an indent, like a recess that this fits into. So it's not just the screws that keep it from sliding around, it's also that little indent section. And now that we've gotten those out, this should be, let me undo the battery door here. This should be really close to coming apart. There's a, a couple of latches up here and I'm gonna give this a little pry and then pop those latches. Now this is actually kind of really annoying. Uh, there's a set of stickers inside would show you how the batteries go, but the stickers are stuck across the uh, separation of the case. So I have to use an X-Acto knife to cut them to open up the case. I went ahead and cut those stickers inside there. I'm gonna try and show you a better view of that. But now we can gingerly lift the case off. Ah, uh, there's a... Bunch of wires hiding in there. And uh, have a look-see inside. This guy right here is going to be the uh, main capacitor. Uh, normally, I would... Uh, uh, give a warning. Well, actually, no, maybe not normally. Let's give the warning. Be very careful with this guy. It's a uh, reasonably high voltage. So let's see here. This is a 330 volt, uh, 500 microfarad. So this is a very chunky capacitor. Let me get a better view of that. 
Let's so be very, very careful with it. Uh, the there seems to be another capacitor in here. That's this yellow guy, and that guy is. Oh my goodness! Let's see here. Looks like a 3.3 microfarad. Now we come to uh, the electronics that are in here. And first of all, you you can see all of this white crusty stuff. That's the uh, battery acid that leaked out of the batteries and that's what I wanted to clean. And also this battery door right here has all of this crusty stuff on it. And we've got a wire brush here that we can uh, clean that up with. Now I can take this and slip it out of there. Like that and like that. Oh, looks like there's a big old piece of, uh, oops, sorry about that. Looks like there's a big old piece of corrosion right there. We can uh, dump that out and uh, try and take a peek at what this uh, guy actually does. Because it looks like there's a piece of tape over top of it to hide what is in there. Let's go ahead and uh, take that tape off. Pulling the tape off, it looks like there. this is, if I had to guess, this is a photodiode which kind of rests in this little hole right here, which then you can either open it up, shut it or open it, which uh, it's hard to tell this, but uh, on looks like on the green position here, there's a little filter in the, in the hole. If you go to the middle position, you shut the hole completely you can kind of see it up here right there. And then if you go to the red hole, the red hole, you can actually kind of see the counter all the way through has no filter at all. Let's get a better view of the circuit board here. It's all through hole construction, which uh, this is your main transformer. And if I had to bet on it, uh, this guy right here was the uh, transistor that uh, creates your oscillations. Uh, the little guy right here with this uh, Celastic or hot's not on it, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this looks like that little transformer for the trigger wire. And if you remember that white wire that came around to the flash tube uh, here on the other side, uh, this looks like the transformer for that. And the rest of the circuitry is most likely related to that auto feature that will adjust the output of the flash depending on the light input of this uh, photodiode. Now, while I was uh, disassembling it, the wire that actually connects to this pad here just ding came right off so something i will have to do is uh, after i clean this go ahead and uh, resolder this back on i went ahead and cleaned the pads here i've gotten all the corrosion off of that and i like to use this uh deoxid uh cleaner corrosion improver etc to do that with not cheap, by the way, not cheap at all. And I went and cleaned the contacts on that. So now I'm going to solder these wires back on and go ahead and put the camera together and uh, sorry, put the flash back together and uh, drop some batteries in it. By the way, before I forget, I wanted to show you that sticker that was driving me nuts. The stickers for the battery orientation actually sit directly across the uh, halves of the case here so i had to get in there with an exacto knife and cut those that was a real real pain in the butt i had a hell of a time soldering uh particularly this black wire back down to its pad what i ran into is that uh, the battery acid essentially wicked its way up the wire and when you take the insulation off of this the wire on the inside here is black and uh 
wire that's corroded like that really doesn't like to take solder. So what I ended up doing is, first of all, I used an X-Acto knife to just very gently scrape the wire to try and get the corrosion off of it. Then I added some flux to it. This is a flux pen. And then finally, uh, between the, the scraping and the flux, the, that little pad uh, took solder. Now I've uh, oh, snapped the case back together and uh, put in some batteries in it. So I don't have the screws in yet or anything, so it's all open, so you have to be very careful. But now let's uh, see if we get some signs of life out of it. Okay, uh, if you've ever heard a flash charge, you get that really classic woo, and I don't think you can actually hear it on camera. Let me see if you can. No, I don't think you can actually hear the humming this thing has, but uh, you can see the ready lamp has illuminated. It's kind of hard to see. And now we can push the test button here and the flash will go off like that. And this thing actually charges pretty quickly for uh, being from completely dead. So let's test that again. There we go. We're all ready to party. I'm going to finish putting the rest of the case on now and we'll be right back. I've got the flash all back together now and I had a bit of a play at it and with it and it looks like whenever you turn it on so you should see the there we go the uh, ready light came on uh, what uh, if the flash is set to manual that M in the middle and we set it off here you'll actually see the ready light go out uh, it's kind of hard to Go like that. You'll see the ready light go out and then come back on. And there it goes again. So manual mode, the flash discharges completely. It completely dumps the uh, capacitor into the um, uh, light element here. But if I switch it, let's say to the red mode and I set it off, you saw the auto check flash, but the uh, intensity of the flash that came out of the light here is far less and that red light didn't go out. Let me do that again like that. So you can, um, this actually senses the, the lighting outside and adjusts it accordingly because it's not terribly dark in here. Whereas I just switched it back to full manual mode. Let me turn it off here. The thing will, set off the whole thing. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give me a, a big thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions, you're always welcome uh, to leave it in the comments.